Hey, Addy. Yeah. What do you call a magic dog? What? A labracadabrador. <laughs> if you're thinking about moving to this greater Portland area, this is the video for you. We're going to go over the 10 things that you have to know before you move to this area. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Lucas Holt, your local realtor for the Southwest Washington and greater Portland area. And again, we got Addy Net back at, at it, it again. again. If this is your first time to the channel, hit that like, hit subscribe, hit that bell button to be notified every time we put out a new video. And again, do not hesitate. Give us a call, give us a text, give us an email anytime, 24-7. Put us to work for you. We take you guys from the cradle to the grave. You'll be working with me from the point that you give me a text all the way through till you close that house for you. So again, cradle what, to the grave. Cradle to the grave, baby. <laughs> That's a new one. So again, what we're gonna go over is 10 things that you must know before moving to this greater Portland market. We're filming this right now at the what? Gosh, oh my God. It's the end of May 2023 for you right now. May so this is an ever-changing <laughs> list, but let's go on to we it. We gotta crank on 10. If we're gonna roll through 10, we gotta crank. There we go. Well, I'll tell you right now, these are in no specific order. At which I all, don't like. Which don't Addy like it doesn't do like. We're not gonna have a numbered system. This isn't tiered, but let's get on to our- trophies first, all around. Right? <laughs> so the first thing that you have to know Oh, sales tax versus income tax. What pick your poison essentially. So on the Oregon side of the bridge, we don't have a sales tax. On the Washington side of the bridge, no income tax. So I kind of boil that down to know your financing. And I preach this all the time in my videos about what to do before you move here. The first thing is to know your finances. What is going to be the most beneficial for you to take advantage of before you move up and start looking at those houses? Yeah, and this is a big thing we got through on those zoom so if you've never reached out to us and you're planning to relocate here we deal with this all the time so lucas and i do a, a joint team zoom we get to know you and if you want to we go through the whole pre-qualification process yep. we chat about salaries jobs new uh budgets things mm -hmm. like that um in short oregon has a tier leveled income based tax from uh six percent all the way up to 9.99 depending on your income level yep and then the Multnomah County, inner city parts of Portland, has an additional city income tax for high income earners. So these are things that we're going through all the time, putting together rough numbers. And we're not CPAs or anything, but yep. I do your mortgage. Like, I know a little about Stuff a we're lot. a little bit knowledgeable in. So yep. hit us up on that. But that's a big difference in, in your savings and your allowed budget. Right? Exactly. So What's the next one? There we go. On to, on to the, the next one. is we got 10 bangers there to There is really nowhere that you can be with having a long commute for you. So going to point A to point B for here. For most people. Right? Point A to point B, <laughs> I say, is at most, what, 30 minutes for people? If that. So Some people's 30 minutes feels like two hours. Okay, this well, guy. that guy over there doesn't like looking at clocks when he's in the car because he has things. a diluted ver uh, viewpoint on how long it gets to place. because I'm the mortgage guy. <laughs> I sit on my computer all day long. You have to go show homes. There's no physical movement in my day. <laughs> so the perk of it, though, I mean, if you talk about wanting to be in the suburbs, yeah. right? So let's talk about Beaverton. You're right next to downtown. Hillsboro, 20 minutes to get in downtown Easy. so the commutes are super simple when you're looking yeah. at portland on a map i had one client actually who is actually buying in reed's crossing right now which right. is kind of like the south central hillsborough area Love it out there. he was from southern california and before he went out there he told me the reason why he kind of push that off of his list mm -hmm. is he was looking at maps and thought that it was a really far away from everything yeah, else. I sat down with him, went over Google Maps, yep. did the drive with him, took him 25 minutes to get to downtown where he works. He thought it was going to take him an hour. So yeah. that's one example right there of showing you, hey, you're really within 30 minutes from any from 
downtown from really anywhere that you decide to settle here. You really are. And just a quick, and I know we have something to go through, a quick change just in the last three to four years is the flexibility from employers on schedule mm -hmm. is totally different totally different yep. post pandemic. So a lot of people are having these like, oh, partial remote, partial office, uh, choose your arrive time. Yep. So you can really tailor your commute schedule to try to avoid some of the heavier times that might tack on an extra 10, 15 minutes. But in short, yes, it's I my being born and raised in Oregon, my mind has been opened there to the fact that <laughs> Traffic really isn't that bad here in Portland and you're very close to everything. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so our next point that you guys have to know about is the suburbs versus the city for you guys. This is big. Yeah. So this is one that Addy was yelling at me. Hey, we have to put this on, have to put this on the list. And I agree with him. At yeah. the end of the day, the suburbs feel so much different from Portland proper, even Multnomah County. I would say. Yeah, so point. that's one thing when you guys are looking on <clears throat> the news, you see the quote unquote liberal hell hole that Portland is, whatever. And it's really kind of a totally different vibe as soon as you get outside of that city. So again, Beaverton is the city that's going to border like your downtown Portland. Mm -hmm. People don't realize looking at it on a map, it's literally about 10 minute drive from downtown Portland where you're feeling like you are just in the complete burbs and right. you don't think you're anywhere near a major city. And that's when I, when people move up here, I tell them, Hey, you should definitely check out the difference in the area. Cause it's like, Hey, you can still be close to the city and get all your ethnic cultural type stuff, right. but still be removed and feel extremely safe. Beaverton's one of the safest air, uh, cities in all of sure. Oregon for you. And yet it is right there. If you want to deal with riffraff, the bars, all that kind of stuff, then yeah, you do have Portland right there. Lower cost of livings, Gresham for you guys, mm -hmm. but you're going to be dealing with that riffraff. That's really what you see on the media, what they're kind of negatively portraying Portland as. But as soon as you get into the surrounding areas, yeah. you don't deal with any of that yeah, kind of crispy, stuff. Crispy, crispy, clean. There we go. So on to our next point for us, you have to know that the school districts are the driving force here of property values. Love that. So whether you talk about your Beaverton, Lake Oswego, Tiger, Tualatin, <clears throat> West Lynn for you guys, those are gonna be four of our top school districts. You see the pricing reflect that for you. Yeah. Even talking about Sherwood, which is one of the further out suburbs yeah. of the greater Portland area where you'd start expecting property values to diminish yeah. because of being further out, you actually see them more expensive in Sherwood mm -hmm. because of those school districts. So those school districts, again, are going to really be the driving factor in property values here. Absolutely. And I mean, we've seen that um, within the last 18 months, we've seen the market dramatically change with interest rates increasing and affordability uh, and buying power decrease. But what hasn't changed is the demand for solid school districts and a family home. So it's a little confusing for some people, depending on what market you're relocating from. You're like, oh, well, I'm getting all these great deals and I'm seeing values go down. Well, the only decrease in value that we're really seeing are the inner city parts of Portland, which the selling point is not the school districts. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find, you know, a no kid uh, family that can afford to buy a bungalow with one bathroom in the inner city. There's just less of those scenarios, but a really great school district, three, two, four, two with mm -hmm. a nice backyard fence for the dog walking distance to the school. I mean, we all know 50 families that right. would take that. So we see those, uh, those levels of demand for that home continue to stay high and go up, which push up the values. So we just like to be transparent. Exactly. You know, if you want what everybody wants, it's still going to be a, a little more expensive, but the positive is it's a great investment because mm -hmm. you're reducing the risk of any sort of volatility on the value of your asset. Exactly. So on to our next one is there is a completely different vibe of 
east side of Portland to the west side of Portland. That Willamette River really <clears throat> strikes that that boundary up right up the middle for you guys. When we're talking about the east side, we're going to be talking about, again, your Beaverton, Tiger, Tualatin, West Lynn, Lake Oswego for you. East side is going to be more of your Milwaukee, Happy Valley, um, let's say, even I put Wilsonville in there for you guys, Oregon City. So the vibes between those two portions are going to feel vastly different than than anything so kind of the east side i it it, it's weird you talk to people here and if they live on the east side they say the west side sucks the west side people say the east side sucks so i've lived on both there we go so Mm -hmm. i think that the east side's a little bit I want to say almost a little bit older feeling for you guys. Oregon City itself is actually the oldest incorporated city in all of Oregon Mm -hmm. for you guys. So I think you get a little bit more personality out of the homes and everything on the west side, on the east side, I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. than what you do on the west. The west is going to feel more like just kind of, I don't want to say cookie cutter because there's most areas aren't cookie cutter there, mm-hmm. but it just feels more just suburbia, just kind of laid back. This is where you're going to go live if you want to throw your kids out to soccer practice. I mean, that's a good point. And quickly going to your, the Willamette splits the east and the west. Mm-hmm. On the east side, <clears throat> east side of the river, you have about 15 to 25 miles of flat grid. So you mm-hmm. see a lot of residential. On the west side, you really just have the downtown, which doesn't have much residential, and then a huge hill where OHSU Hospital is Mm -hmm. begins. So you get this blanketed spot, and then Beaverton and Tigard all start. So there's really not a lot of residential on the inner west side until you hit the suburbs versus east side spans out. Mm -hmm. So that's where there is a big difference. It's really tough, but generally I would say the east side's a little more blue collar and the west side's a little more white collar, but it's a barely majority wins. It's like, it's it's a tough argument. I think we yep. could do a whole episode just yep. on East First West. So on Stay to the tuned. next one for you guys. <laughs> it's all about location, location, location here. Yeah, tr- not trying to be cliche. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, so with that being said, I mean, again, location in your school districts is a big thing. And again, yeah. that Multnomah County line here, it's not doing anybody justice with some of the liberal policies that are going forward, such as your rentals, uh, your rental laws that are going on, um, a lot of your additional taxes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff going on right now where, you know, people are kind of trying to get, not necessarily trying to get out of Multnomah County, but really finding themselves coming out of it because it makes more sense for them financially. And that's one thing you and I do, like when we do these zooms and you've got to schedule with Mm -hmm. us and get on our calendars, we'll, a lot of the times we'll get so bust out Google maps and show you where these county lines are. Mm -hmm. Cause we had a transaction together once where we were analyzing two properties generally in the same neighborhood, like literally two football. They were literally a five minute drive away from each other. Yeah, Not even that like super close, but the difference in the taxes alone were about $275 more a month mm-hmm. per month for this house on one side of the county or the other. So it makes a really big difference. Definitely. So on to the next one for you guys. And I'm sorry, I'm looking at our notes here because, you know, we. How spent, many more do we have? We not a, not very many. I You're think pushing got, a strong clip. I think we've got three for you. That's it, right? So. With that being said, right now, just again, this is done end of May, May 31st, 2023 for you. So a little bit more real time stuff right now. Talking about inventory. Inventory across our our territory here right now is extremely low for you guys. So that's the thing to note, kind of the public narrative right now is that it is a buyer's market. Well, you guys aren't going to get any like amazing, huge, huge killer deals right now because of how low the inventory is. This is some of our lowest inventory that we've seen in years, guys. So when you are looking, I highly, highly suggest whether you want to move 
you know, in one month, or if you want to move in one year, I would suggest that we start looking at properties almost immediately mm -hmm. because of how tight that inventory is. We definitely see a little bit amount trickle on each week, but those are being gobbled up still very quickly because of that low inventory rate. If you're talking about your Beaverton, West Lynn, you know, your top school districts, we see extremely limited inventory in there and those houses are moving very, very quickly right now. Yeah, and I mean, just to add to that really quick, I'll try not to be long-winded, Lucas. <clears throat> I think you've seen a lot of improvements in technology mm -hmm. in analyzing the values of homes based on very recent comparable sales. Yep. So just five, six, seven years ago, it was kind of a mystery of what the home would be worth. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the advancements we have in data, public records, AI, all these things. I remember there was a running joke, Zestimates and red right. fits. And we still make fun of those, don't get me wrong. However, they have become dramatically more accurate mm -hmm. and the seller and selling agents are orbiting around a plan of reality right now. Right. So a good deal really is a sales price. It's honestly listed and mm -hmm. hopefully we're getting some closing costs covered. There ain't the throw a hundred thousand dollars, even 50 under, yep. cause there's a whole camp out there with stakes in the ground mm -hmm. saying I'll buy this house if I can get a hundred thousand dollars off it. And that's just not the market. Exactly. Way. Exactly. So on to our next thing for you guys talking about the average sales prices here for you guys. And just talking about, Hey, what can you get for your money in this area right yeah. now? We've had success getting people in here with budgets as low as three, three fifty, all the way up million plus for you guys. Obviously, we can find you a home if you got that big of a budget, right? Right, right, right. So the reason I bring that up though, so if you have a budget, you're three, three fifty for you, mm -hmm. you're going to be looking at townhomes, condos for you guys. So I want to do that to set the expectation that when you do come up here, if you want to start looking at single family detached homes really your starting budget needs to be north of 400 grand for us and those are going to be for homes that are going to need some work to put into it and you're talking about your less desired areas for you yeah the median price point to this market right now so an average house three bed two bath for you is going to hover around your 575 type area for you guys. Right. Obviously, when you're talking about, you know, how good school districts are, you're going to start talking about higher up costs for you. Beaverton's a great one that I always suggest people look at. You have a starting set, uh, starting price point to get into there again, around that median price point. But once you start going a little bit further south into your Tiger Tualatin, then you start creeping up on that price point, right. 600, 650. Then when you talked about West Lynn Lake Oswego, you're talking about 800, Stacks. 900 for you guys. <laughs> so hard. I set, want to set that expectation up for you guys that, hey, you need to know that if you're coming in with 350, 400 for you, we really need to start looking at townhomes and condos for you guys. Um, just it's something you need to know before you move here. Yeah. And we dive into those numbers in deep because you start getting to that sub 400 market, you mm -hmm. have HOAs. Yep. So that plays a huge role in a $300,000 condo with a high HOA might actually be more expensive than a $450,000 single family. Exactly. It, it happens. And we run all that math and we review this on these calls. So once again, guys, if you're planning to relocate here, Lucas and I have these Zoom calls every week, mm -hmm. like very busy and we love them. We love to get to know new people moving here. We love to get to hear what's important to you, the lifestyle you want. So hit us up, email, text, call, whatever it takes, get on our calendar. We're excited to- There we go. And don't forget to hit that it. subscribe and like for us guys. So thank you all for tuning in and have a great one.